wig or some curious thing. Do you remember? And an um, ride them with an umbrella. Uh, this is Tally. Um, Wellsdale can do it all. And uh, he's, a, he's a yearling colt. He's going to stay a stallion. Um, just while I've got him down here, a lot of you know me quite well and some of you don't know me very much at all, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of a talk about me and about what I've done in the past and so on and so forth, just really quickly. Um, I went to school um, in Armidale and took one of my father's old racehorses with me, which was wonderful, and um, so did quite a lot of riding there, some eventing and dressage and show jumping and a bit of polo cross. Um, after that, I, of course, bought a horse straight off the track, as everybody does, and um, kept that in Sydney till I moved to Hong Kong, where I rode, um, again, ex racehorses in Hong Kong, um, dressage and show jumping. Then moved to England, where I did um, dressage, show jumping, a little bit of eventing, and then moved to Singapore, where I did um, rode sort of national to international level and dressage and show jumping. I also played quite a lot of polo in Singapore, and I ran the um, Singapore Branch of Pony Club for quite some time there as well. It was while I was there in Singapore that I decided, I was actually at a show in Malaysia, and um, the judge wrote in the dressage test, she said, horse looks beautiful on the outside, but I feel ready to explode on the inside. And she was absolutely right. The horse was, you know, absolutely ready to explode. And I thought, you know, I won that test, and I thought, this isn't right. You know, I could get much better performance out of my horse if the horse was more relaxed and understood a bit better what I wanted it to do. It was my feeling that really the horse just didn't really understand what I wanted it to do, which was why it was so tense. So I thought, well, if I can get the horse to relax a bit and if I can you know, teach the horse to you know, work out what it is I want him to do, if I can communicate a bit better with the horse, then I'm going to do a better job and then the horse is going to do a better job and he's going to enjoy it more. What I really want you know, is a horse that enjoys doing what I wanted to do. So while I was there, um, my husband at the time said, we're moving to America. I said, oh, great. So I started looking into um, clinicians and horse trainers in the States, and um, I came up with a number of them, and I spoke to everyone I knew to try and find out which one they sort of recommended. What worried me about natural horsemanship was that a lot seemed to happen on the ground. You seemed to get this great relationship with your horse. You know, I can do anything with my horse on the ground. But there wasn't a lot of performance. So there wasn't a lot of people getting to the dressage um, competitions or doing the show jumping or eventing. They were, they were mostly just sort of, you know, playing with their horse and having a good time. So I wanted someone that did some performance, which is when I found John Lyons, who's um, an American um, natural horsemanship uh, performance sort of base trainer. So I studied with him. I went there, spent about seven months in Colorado with John and his son, which was a fabulous experience. And um, then I moved back to England and set up a um, horse training business called Equine Perfection in England. And then I got terribly homesick and here I am. <laughs> You're a good boy. All right, this little fella, I've had him for um, two months now. And he, uh, he's a yearling, as I said, so he's a year old. He spent the first year of his life out in the field with all the other horses. And when I went to pick him up, the only sort of thing he'd seen with people was getting branded. So he got popped into a round pen, and then he got put into a crush and he got branded. So when I came along and said, oh, hello, mate, I think I'll take you home. He said, no, not a chance. You know, you're not getting anywhere near me. Thank you very much. Just because he's young doesn't mean he can't do something useful, this little fella. He went to a show a few weeks ago and he had to wear a bridle. Um, so I had to teach him a few things about the bridle. Now with pressure in mind, pressure's their language, so I'm using his language. What I do to teach the horse to um, go in frame is to apply some pressure to the bit and release the pressure when he does what I want. So at the moment, all I want him to do is to just put his head down and listen to me. That's all, that's all I wanted to do. So we start there using the horse's language. But really that is the start. I think pretty much after these initial few lessons, we re it's really more about teaching the horse our language than it is about speaking his language. We're going to use pressure to teach him, but we want him to learn the things that we want to do with him.
Okay, in a moment I'll bring out pie. This is the first lesson with the bridle, which is just give to the bit, stay in frame. And after that, we start taking control of his feet.